Hello, and welcome back to the podcast. Thank you for being here. If you are new, thank you. If you are here and not listening to the Farming Without the Bank podcast, I encourage you to listen to both. Even though that one is farming, I am not duplicating content. And so there is still stuff over there that is not farm-related, but IBC-related that you are going to want to listen to. Today, we are going to talk about use it or lose it. This has become a bit of a hot topic for me because I have lots of clients currently that are in this part of the mentality of IBC. We are five, six, seven years into our policies and we have forgotten why we have the policies. I have a client right now that is an old client. He's about, uh, he's probably seven years old or eight year old client. And I am having to take him back through the basics of how much he can borrow, how to pay it back, um, why he has the policy, why he's asking about taking money out of the policy. And so I said, you should listen to the podcast. And he said, I don't have time to listen to the podcast. Maybe we just need to meet twice a year. And that's fine. I'm happy to do that because I love him. And so I, I love to talk to people in person. But in the meantime, if it's every six months that we meet, we forget about why we have the policy. And so before I did this podcast, I thought, well, I'm just going to review Nelson's chapter on use it or lose it. Because I think so many people just skim over that chapter as if it's not a big deal. And we talk, or I talk, a lot about the arrival syndrome, right? That you've learned something and you've arrived and you don't need to know anything else. And this use it or lose it really joins up well with the arrival syndrome because we think we know it. So we think we know IBC. We've not arrived. We've read the book. We've learned all about it. But now we're five, six, seven years into it or six months or a year into it. I have those clients too that they completely forget why they have it, but they haven't gone back to revisit the book. They haven't reread the book. They haven't listened to any podcasts. They haven't listened to any YouTube stuff on infinite banking. And it's very, it is a very different dynamic than the clients that are listening to the podcast, that are reading the book. Those clients that have not succumbed to use it or lose it, they're starting new policies. They're creating new wealth. They're getting away. They're actually getting away from the bank. I talked to a client this morning that this is, he has a $3,000 operating note with the bank. The rest of his operating is with him. And so his operating is about $250 a year. And he is finally to the point where he can operate solely on the policy and has taken him about five years to get there. And that's fantastic. He has got there and now he's going to have this huge surplus of money because cash flow is coming in. Everything's great. He thinks about these policies nonstop. He is listening to the podcast. He is paying attention. And so it was very interesting when I went back. And you guys, I read Nelson's book at least once or twice a year. And I still find things that I didn't find before because I'm always in a different spot. And I do this all day long. For 14 years, I've done this. All day, every day, that's all I talk about is infinite banking. I don't do anything else. All right. I'm not selling property and casualty insurance. I'm not selling long-term care. I can, but I rarely talk about it. Rarely. Should you have it? Maybe. Depends on what you got going on. In my situations, maybe. Am I selling disability insurance? No. Am I selling accidental insurance? No. I do one thing. That's it. And so for me, even to go back and read Nelson's books, I'm like, oh, yeah. And I'm highlighting. I just found myself a month ago reading his book again, preparing for some stuff, highlighting new stuff. I mean, if you're watching me on YouTube, you can see this is the use it or lose it chapter. Look at how much I have highlighted. And I didn't highlight anything new today because I'm like, well, I'm just going to highlight the whole page. And so that's silly. Now I have to start highlighting in different colors to emphasize. And pretty soon I'm going to have a multicolored page, right? It is like people that read the Bible that are highlighting and their Bible's all marked up. This is my financial Bible. That's what I call it. 
And so when Nelson talks about use it or lose it, he is talking about overcoming, and I'm just going to pick out a a couple pieces here, overcoming human nature to say, okay, I learned it, we're good, let's move on. We're not going to keep it up. And then he goes on to talk about economic value add. In the Fortune magazine, there was an article about EVA and about how your money has a cost to it. And we talk about that in IBC, that if you pay cash for something, you still had a cost to that cash because you didn't have that cash earning you interest, right? So you financed it either way. But here is the interesting part of what he's talking about here. He said, EVA works. If you don't make these mistakes, these common mistakes, they don't make it a way of life. Most managers try to implement EVA too fast. The boss lacks conviction. Managers fuss too much. And training gets short shifted. Think about that. Let's just break it down. The first one. They don't make it a way of life. So you bought a policy, but are you using it? Are you making it a way of life? Are you constantly thinking about it, right? It's like saying, okay, I'm going to go on a diet, but I'm not going to, I'm only going to change the way I eat once. I'm not making that a way of life. Even with finances, we have to do the same thing. It's no different than if we're talking about Dave Ramsey's budgeting. It worked for a day, but then you didn't make it a way of life. And so now you're back into debt because you're overspending and you're outside of your budget. Are you making IBC a way of life? Are you borrowing the money? Are you paying it back? Most managers try to implement it too fast. Are your policies too big that you can't even pay them back? that you don't have the money to pay the full premium? Are you paying the full premium? If you are a client of mine and you don't know if you're paying full premium, you better be emailing me and asking because some of you are not paying the full premium. Why? Why are you only paying the minimum? Because you didn't make it a way of life. You didn't pay attention to it after the fact. And so I'm gonna challenge you to go back and do that. If you're a client, not paying what you're supposed to be paying. Your boss lacks conviction. You are the boss in this situation. Are you convinced that this is absolutely the way to get out of the banking system? The way to possibly create, to build a system so you can create the cash flow. If you are not convinced of that, then please do more research because you haven't gotten all of your answers yet. And we need to make sure you get those answers. If you are not convicted on this, it's because you don't have all the answers. I'm happy to answer those questions because some of them are hard questions to answer and some people want to avoid them. I'm not going to avoid the question. Managers fuss too much. Are you fussing about your policy? Are you fussing that you have to pay interest to the insurance company to use their money? Because if you do, we're not understanding the process, right? And training fell short. Did I not train? Did you not want me to train? Okay, we have, what does that look like? I'm out here creating the podcast. I'm out, I've got client only Facebook page. I've done a client only seminar. You guys have access to me whenever you want. The training is there. Are you accessing it? I have client only webinars that only clients get access to. Are you guys watching those? I'm going to say no, because a lot of you call with questions. The people that have not gone through use it or lose it, that are implementing all those things, their wealth is created. They're starting new businesses. They're using the policies. It's so fun to watch. If you have not committed to that, why? If you are somebody that's just getting started, you have to understand this is not a buy a policy and leave it kind of scenario. This is actually you being the banker, not Mary Jo being the banker, not your agent being the banker. This is you being the banker. You have to participate in this portion of your life. You don't get to not participate. 
Okay. So I really just, I have, I've just had so many questions on it that I wanted to touch on that. I don't, let me just look very, very quickly. He and, oh, Nelson did mention that this is the last human consideration which must be faced if we are to be successful in becoming your own banker. And the last one, why? Because we have went over the golden rule. We have went over the arrival syndrome. We have went over Willie Sutton's law. There's a lot of, if this is going to fail, if IBC is going to fail, it is 99.9% going to be on you, the owner of the policy. Are you in the mindset of the banker? Do you understand what you're doing? You haven't arrived in IBC, have you? You are continually educating yourself, right? Because if we don't, are we going to be good at what we do? If you have a business, are you continually educating yourself in your business? Are you looking at new things that are coming up? Or are you the guy in your business falling behind? Are you 20 years behind what everybody else is doing because you don't want to change and you've arrived? continually educate yourself and see all the new things. I've worked a lot with contractors over the last few years just for properties we've bought and remodeled and so on and so forth. And it's really interesting to work with multiple contractors because a young contractor will come in and he will have all the latest and greatest cool stuff and the old guy is still doing it the way he did 30 years ago. And a really, here's a really good example of that. The people that built my deck framed it completely wrong. Nine violations on my deck, code violations. And the guy said, I've built decks for 30 years. I know what I'm doing. No, clearly you don't because there's nine code violations. But the young kid coming in that is diligent about his business and he has not arrived in the construction field and he's new, and he's wanting to grow, and he's got all this ambition, he's the one that came in and said, Mary Jo, you need this deck inspected because there's a lot of violations here. And the old guy just wants to do it like he's done it for the last 30 years. Well, guess what? That wasn't to code. And then he was mad because it wasn't to code because he's done this for 30 years. Well, I frankly don't care. That's not the code, right? You can't put too small a joist hangers on the deck because apparently that's what you had on hand. I mean, that's just asinine. If you have a business, are you constantly growing in that business? You know, one of the things that we've looked at and I've done some research on is car washes. And I've never thought about this before until I want to have a car wash. And I'm looking at these car washes and I'm like, okay, all the new car washes are busy, but the old car washes are not that busy. There's still people going through them, but they're not that busy. I said to my husband the other day, why wouldn't somebody upgrade their car wash? I get that there's an expense there, but that car wash is 30 years old. So why wouldn't they upgrade it? Why wouldn't they make it nicer and keep it going? Because they've become complacent. They've arrived in their thought process around their business. And I hope to God I never do that. I hope that I'm always learning and I'm always trying to educate. But if you have a policy, you can't get to use it or lose it. You have to keep educating. Keep reading my book. Keep reading Nelson's book. If you don't have both of them, get both of them. You should have Nelson's book. You should be reading those books at least once a year. At least once a year. People have told me that they'll read my book three times and I can tell because they get it. And they're like, oh my gosh, there was so much I missed the first two times. Every single time they read my book, they're learning something different. And so go back and reread that stuff and keep educating yourself. It's just a couple hour read. Every time you read it, it it gets a little bit faster because you've already read some of that stuff. You can skim over it, right? But sitting down and actually thinking about those things. All right. Let me know if you have comments, questions, concerns. If you have not gotten my book or Nelson's book, go to withoutthebank.com and get them. They're a bundle. Get both of them, read them, and then schedule your appointment. And I am happy to help and go over things and figure out where you can get started. Or if you have to wait, then you wait and we get started later, however that works. But you don't know until you schedule that appointment. So go ahead, get that scheduled, and then we will meet and we will visit. All right, guys. 
Have a fantastic rest of your day.